This decade saw Hollywood reflect the changes in society and technology in some landmark films. Rose, Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, in this installment of our series on the greatest movies of all time, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies of the 1940s. He's looking at you, kid. For our series of the best movies of all time, we've chosen 10 movies per decade based on their iconic status, critical acclaim, box office success, and watchability. And just so you know, we're not necessarily choosing the movies your film studies professor would pick. So sit back and relax as we explore the highest highs and lowest lows of a tumultuous decade. Yeah. Ah! Number 10, The Great Dictator. Hey, Never one to shy away from controversy, Charlie Chaplin released this anti-Nazi film at the start of World War II. Straf! Straf! Da fluten flamen da cheese a kraken! Da fluten flamen da banana! Da fluten da banana! Satirizing Hitler and his regime, the movie follows a Jewish barber as he attempts to avoid imprisonment by Nazi troops. Though it was banned in some parts of Europe, the great dictator eventually earned millions at the box office, landed five Oscar nominations, and signaled Chaplin's complete move to talking pictures. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! <laughs> Number nine, the treasure of the Sierra Madre. As long as there's no find, the noble brotherhood will last. But when the piles of gold begin to grow, that's when the trouble starts. No one ever said that being a gold prospector is easy. And when it's further complicated by distrustful partners and dangerous banditos, it can be downright life-threatening. I got three of them. Credit me with three. How many did you get? A couple, I guess. <laughs> I'm one up on you. I better get more than you did, Pop. I got three. Nice shooting, eh? Uh, hey, look at that bullet hole about two inches from where my head was. That was close, eh? Featuring Humphrey Bogart and Tim Holt as two penniless Americans looking for their fortune in Mexico, this John Huston adventure is a darkly humorous character study on greed and morality that won several Oscars and inspired countless filmmakers. Throw that old light on over here. We'll pick it up and go Norway. You go anyway without my gun and go quick. Number eight, the Philadelphia story. You really hate me, don't you, Connor? No. I don't like you very much, though. This is less of a love triangle and more of a love square. Katherine Hepburn plays a socialite with more suitors than she can successfully manage, including her ex-husband, played by Cary Grant. Oh, you want to get even with your ex-bride, huh? I'll have a car, pick them up at noon tomorrow in North Philadelphia. Cast to perfection, it's a smartly written classic romantic comedy that allowed audiences to reconnect with Hepburn as a star and kept the Hepburn-Grant machine moving while also taking home two Academy Awards. Ah, that's the old redhead. No bitterness, no recrimination. Just a good swift left to the jaw. <laughs> Number seven, Fantasia. This animated Disney epic was a deviation from the standard cartoon fare of the time pushing the envelope by blending abstract sequences and classical music. As a feature-length film, it relied heavily on aesthetics and the experience, including the use of Fantasound audio to give the impression of a live orchestra. It was met with a so-so response from commercial audiences and mixed reviews from critics, but Fantasia eventually went down in history as a cinematic marvel. I guess nobody knew Harry like he did, like I did. Number six, The Third Man. Take Mr. Holly Martin home. Holly Martin, sir? The, uh, the writer? Set in a war-ravaged Vienna, the film is a dark crime thriller with an innovative score. An American author is on a hunt to figure out who may or may not be responsible for the death of his friend. I wondered about it a hundred times, if it really was an accident. What difference does it make? He's dead, isn't he? Shot in stark black and white and often at odd angles, 
Its visual style matches its mysterious storytelling style to produce film noir of the highest order. One far? Uh, just a couple of miles. I'd have walked her if my dogs wasn't pooped out. Number five, The Grapes of Wrath. We lived here 50 years, same place. Everybody's got to get off. Everybody's leaving, going out to California. The Great Depression hit the world hard, including the hard-worn farmers of the Midwest. The film, based on John Steinbeck's milestone and Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, follows the Joad family as they travel west towards California in search of better opportunities and a chance at life. Sure don't look none too prosperous. Although bleak and harsh in nature, the Academy Award-winning film and its actors accurately capture the difficulties for many of America's poor at a time when economic conditions were at their worst. They can't wipe us out, they can't lick us. We'll go on forever, Pa, because we're the people. I'm trying to find my sister. I have reason to believe that she's here in San Francisco with a man by the name of Thursby, Floyd Thursby. Number four, the Maltese Falcon. Why were you tailing Thursby? I wasn't, Miles wasn't, but the simple reason we had a client. Who's the client? Sorry, I can't tell you that. A detective is tasked with solving the murder of his partner, finding a mysterious falcon statue, dealing with some shady characters, and a not that trustworthy love interest. Sam, did you kill him? Who put that bright idea in your head? Both critics and audiences heralded this John Huston masterpiece as the quintessential murder mystery of its time, with Humphrey Bogart's Sam Spade leading the charge. When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it. Its artistic use of camera angles, along with its gritty, detective-driven plot and masterful melodrama, still makes it a cinematic favorite. What is it? The, uh... Stuff that dreams are made of. What'd you stop it for? I want you to take a good look at that face. Number three, It's a Wonderful Life. Big, see, I, I don't want one for one night. I want something for a thousand and one night. It's a timeless feel-good film, there to remind you of the value of life. Headlined by Jimmy Stewart, this Frank Capra classic follows a man as he comes to terms with the meaning of his existence, as well as the importance of family and friendship. Jenny, Tommy! Look at you. Oh, I could eat you up. It's a Wonderful Life initially lost money, but it's since become essential holiday viewing that keeps audiences coming back generation after generation. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Number two, Casablanca. Here's looking at you, kid. The tumult of the era found its way into many movies, and this is one of the most notable. Humphrey Bogart plays the owner of a club in Casablanca, Morocco, which sees its fair share of expatriates and refugees seeking solace from the growing hostility of the Nazi regime. Well, I told Strasser he wouldn't find the letters here, but I told my men to be especially destructive. You know how that impresses Germans? In addition to its stellar storytelling and impeccable acting, there's romance, danger, bogey, and Ingrid Bergman. It's a recipe for a classic that you'll regret not experiencing. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. Before we unveil our pick for best movie of the 1940s, here are a few honorable mentions. You handle just automobile insurance or all kinds? All kinds. Fire, earthquake, theft, public liability, group insurance, industrial stuff, and so on right down the line. Accident insurance? Accident insurance? Sure, Mr. Dietrichson. I've given you every chance to make something of yourself. I gave up my own job when you asked me. I gave up the best years of my life, and what have you done? You flopped. Couldn't even hold that job in the drugstore. It's a lovely room, isn't it? Loveliest room you've ever seen. Everything is kept just as Mrs. De Winter liked it. Nothing has been altered since that last night. I'm the kid that's all the candy. I'm a Yankee doodle dandy. I'm glad I am. So Uncle Sam. I'm a real life Yankee doodle. Made my name and fame and boodle just as Mr. Doodle did by riding on a pony. 
Rosebud. Number one, Citizen Kane. I sympathize with you. Charles Foster Kane is a scoundrel. His paper should be run out of town. A committee should be formed to boycott him. Widely considered the greatest film ever made, this tour de force tells the life story of an immensely wealthy newspaper magnate through flashbacks. What were Kane's last words? Do you remember, boys? Uh, yes, yes we What were the last words he said on Earth? Maybe he told us all about himself on his deathbed. Yeah, and maybe he didn't. Pretty clearly based on the life of William Randolph Hearst, the era's biggest publishing mogul, the film was the brainchild of Orson Welles, who painstakingly created a masterpiece. I expect to lose a million dollars next year. You know, Mr. Thatcher, at the rate of a million dollars a year, I'll have to close this place in 60 years. By utilizing groundbreaking cinematic and storytelling techniques, Wells ensured Citizen Kane won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay and stood apart from its contemporaries for generations. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie of the 40s? For more thrilling top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.